Welcome to Chuck Builds. Today I have an Easy Store Western Digital external hard drive and we're going to shuck this hard drive. The term shuck is shuck like an oyster. We want to crack this open and get the hard drive out inside and put that hard drive into a computer case. The reason for this is you can buy these external hard drives for much, much cheaper than an internal hard drive on sale. We have an 18 terabyte hard drive in here that I was able to get for like 180 bucks or something. I can't remember exactly. I've been sitting on it for a while until I had a chance to record this shucking. We're going to crack it outside this case. We're gonna try and keep this to put an old hard drive in and use it just as like a backup. Some things to note are that you'll be voiding your warranty on this external hard drive. I haven't had any issues with my previously shucked hard drives and I've, I have heard of people putting hard drives back and shipping it back for their warranty. I'm not really concerned. I haven't had any issues yet. I'm just trying to get a lot of capacity for really cheap. There's a little bit of a caveat that we'll cover at the end with the 3.3 volt pin. I wanna take the hard drive inside of here and put it in my server. I wanna take an older, smaller hard drive and put it back in here so I can use the USB and power and use it as a kind of last chance backup, like a cold storage almost. And to do so, we can't be breaking this. In years past, I would just stick a screwdriver in here or my thumb and just pull it apart. I'm going to try and do it better this time. To get inside of this, I'm going to use some old hotel key cards to slide in here to get to the tabs that are keeping this closed. There's four tabs, slightly uh, askew from each other, but we should hear it. I think I might've popped one on the left here by just prying with my thumb to show you how to get in. I heard a crack, so I probably broke it, but we wanna use these, tab these cards and slide it in here and try and find those tabs and kind of just separates this um, enclosure. Let's see how much wiggle I get. And we'll be taking a screwdriver to the front and just kind of prying to get in there. So we've got some movement. I probably have this top tab covered. Let's get in here. I hear some plastic rattling, so I definitely broke a tab already. And just popping from the front. And it just kind of slides apart. The two tabs we're looking for were here and here. So off center in the back on the right side. And then on the left side, it's a little higher up. Where my fingers are pointing or where the two tabs where I stuck the cards. So try and emulate it there. And then just kind of pry the top bottom from the front and slide this out. And it's just a, a hollow shell. We'll put that aside and we'll look at the hard drive we have in here. It is a Western Digital white drive, internal use. And we have this little board in the back that plugs into it, just like a regular hard drive uh, SATA and power connector would. But we wanna get all this out without breaking anything. But we've got some hidden screws that are behind these little circles. Here, these mount points aren't that accessible to us. Just by kind of pushing from the front on this right side, it kind of popped out. And I'm gonna to try to carefully separate as much as I can without breaking anything. And I'm really just pulling apart the case and trying to just slide this whole enclosure out if I can. There we go. <laughs> Don't do that. So I've got the hard drive out. We're gonna to wanna to remove these side mounts, which look to be Torx keys. We do have a Phillips head screw right here that is, has the board mounted to the hard drive. So I'll go ahead and remove that. And then I'm gonna remove it. It's just like unplugging a connector. It's in there, so you wanna pull it up. Just kind of wiggle it out. And this was the board that connected to the hard drive. So for the remainder of this hard drive, I have a Torx T9 bit, and I'm just gonna unscrew these little rubber feet from the side so that I can mount this in my hard drive trays in my server. And the last thing we'll do is remove this little plastic indicator light. It's got a little adapter into this hole and we'll just pull it out and we'll save that. And so our hard drive is out. 
but we're not done yet. So we're not quite done yet if you're gonna put this into most computers, and that is because of the 3.3 volt pin issue. And so what that is, is this pin right here, if it receives a voltage of 3.3 volts um, from your power connector for your computer, it'll turn off the hard drive. That was a feature for turning off disks in like a data center or spinning it down while it's inside of this case. But inside of your computer, it will never be recognized by BIOS because it will receive power on this pin and just not turn on. There's three ways to go about this that I really see as an option. Uh, there's one where you just kind of bend this up and it'll snap off back here, the third pin in. The other choice is to cover it up with a tape of some kind, like electrical tape, and that's usually what I do. But you need to be careful that when you attach the power adapter that it doesn't slip around or come off, or if you're moving hard drives often, I don't know why you would, um, but it's possible when pulling off the connector that the tape comes off too. And then the third option that I see people do is on the connector that this would connect to, they'd snip a wire on like the Molex connector to keep it from working. Um, I'm gonna do the tape method, so let me get some electrical tape. So I'm going to take some electrical tape and peel off just a little bit. We want a straight line, so I'm gonna use a razor and I'm going to just place it on my cl somewhat clean work surface. And I'm trying to see how wide it needs to be to cover that up. Make one score straight down and another score right next to it, straight down. And then we'll peel this up. So I've got my little strip here. It's kind of <laughs> thinner on one side. So I'm gonna put that thinner side on the connector here. And I'm really gonna press it down good because I don't want this to slide off. So I've got my tape on the connector and I'm just using my finger to really press it on there. And then I'm going to end up cutting it, not perfectly flush. I'm gonna cut it just with a little bit sticking out so I can wrap it around the back just so it's kind of a little bit more in place. I've had a few of these come off um, when moving the power connectors. Like if I was shuffling between cases or getting rid of a smaller drive to put in a bigger one. So I try to do that extra little bit over the top just to really secure it. And I'm just gonna kind of get in there and give it a little bit of a push. You wanna be careful because this connector is fragile and you can break it. We just wanna make sure that the tape is adhering, not that we're like, not that we're really pushing on it too hard. So now we're pretty much done with this and we're good to put it in a computer. So I just wanted to show that I have the hard drive here with the uh, taped over third pin and I'm putting it in the caddy to put it inside of my case. So I wanted to show, I've got the hard drive in and you can see the little bit of tape right there above my finger. And so I'll be just taking this plug, this power connector, and plugging it right over that tape. We'll be good to go. As a bonus at the end of this video, I've got my, the hard drive that I replaced with the hard drive that we shucked. Um, I'm gonna put this back into the enclosure this hard drive is having some smart errors, bad sector counts. Um, it's one of my oldest hard drives that I have in my server, and it's also one of the smallest at four terabytes. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out. I'm replacing it with a much bigger and newer drive, but it still works, so I'm not gonna get rid of it. I'm gonna give it a very slow and painful death in this enclosure, getting cooked next to my Proxmox where I'll have this probably plugged in. Um, I'm gonna be screwing these back in. And one thing I know is going to be a challenge based on previous hard drives is getting this hard drive to physically fit inside of the enclosure. I've had some pretty unfortunately sized drives in the past when I've tried this, but I think we might get lucky today. All right, so we have our mounts back on this drive. I'm going to take the status light, and I believe this would have been Let's think about this. If I have this plugged in, so I'll go ahead and plug in the board here that connects to these pins. I wanna get my orientation right for this plug. 
or for this light rather. I'm just gonna stick this plastic in this hole right here. And I believe that the light is in this rubber piece. So straight across there. I'm going to use this other hole and the screw from earlier to screw down the board. Try to figure out how to slide this back in. So we have our ports down here. It looks like it's supposed to come from this side. I'm just trying to kind of finagle this so that these ports line up better. We've got these little rubber shock mount feet things sticking out everywhere. It's a little misaligned, but I think we'll be able to kind of push it once it's plugged in. I'm actually pretty happy with how that turned out. Well, we've got a little bit of bend here. So I'm gonna make sure that these feet are actually in the little holes that I think they're supposed to be in. So once all the rubber feet are in their spots, it actually seals up pretty okay. Um, the ports are lined up, so we're going to snap this back together. All right, so this hard drive is now ready to go live out the rest of its days on the bottom shelf of my server rack. I hope you've enjoyed watching this. The reason um, we use those cards to save these pens was so we could put it back together like this. If you don't care about that, you can just rip it apart and break the pens and throw all this plastic away. Um, I'm just trying to kind of put something back to use. If you buy this and you are only shucking it, you're not putting another hard drive back in, you're getting rid of the plastic, the included power connector is actually great for Shelly's. Um, all you would need is a little adapter kind of like this um, for that power connector to plug into. And you got 12 volt power for your Shelly. And a free little, free little power plug, nothing great. Since you made it to the end of this video, I'm going to share a secret with you of where you can buy these hard drives on sale and quickly see when they're um, a good price or not. I'll have the link in the description across the screen right here. It's called Shuckstop shucks.top um, great website huge shout out to them for always letting me know when there's a good deal and uh, keeping me on top of my financial budget thanks for watching i hope this worked if you have any questions let me know and i'll see you in the next one